G'day everyone, thanks for checking into the Breathless vlog. Um, clearly, I haven't been on a run this week, and there's a couple of little reasons why, and I'll, I'll, I'll come clean and explain myself, but uh, the first of those is that I'm tapering uh, for a longer run this Sunday. So it's supposed to be a half marathon, jetty to jetty run out near Clontarf, Redcliffe, and back. Um, but secondly, this week has just been one of those weeks where it's near impossible to fit anything in else uh, other than being dad or husband or a bit of family time, um, which is all right. But uh, I've mentioned it before, but man, childcare and the first year in when you've got a little one is just tough, right? For those people who've been there, you're hearing me loud and clear. Earlier this week, uh, we're trying to get Tilly cleared from a diagnosis of conjunctivitis. Yesterday, she wakes up with a tummy bug and look, luckily today she's feeling better, but certainly yesterday, I earned my dad stripes well and truly and look there's only so much poo and spew one man can handle so so glad that she's feeling a bit better today but then Kim my wife has come home from work and she's not feeling too crash hot in fact she's gone to bed without any dinner she's already had a little technicolor yawn so she's yeah been laid out by this thing as well so that only leaves me for now so if for all of you if you've got any thoughts and prayers some well wishes um, send them our way for my wife, but also send a little bit of hope for me that I can hopefully, with my iron gut, avoid a tummy bug at all costs before actually a really big couple of days of photography and shooting, let alone trying to run 21Ks on Sunday. But anyway, that's how it is. All right, now, first of all, this week, before I get into the run stuff, I want to introduce a, well, a very important, a very special addition to my photography family. And look, it's not, it's not too often these days that I get overly excited about gear, but I want to introduce you to Nikon's D6 uh, DSLR body. It's the flagship DSLR for Nikon. Um, what a beast it is. And, and look, for, for 10, 11 years since I got into photography as a hobbyist, owning one of these, owning a flagship camera has been on the bucket list, but you know, when they cost nearly 10 grand, uh, it's certainly unattainable. So before I get into what I love about this camera already without even having really had a chance to shoot with it yet, is I just want to give a quick shout out to the very good people at DigiDirect here in Brisbane. No, I'm not getting any kickbacks or you know endorsement sponsorship to say this, but they've always been fantastic for me. So to Ryan Lee, their whole team, um, they always go above and beyond to you know, to put together uh, a really competitive quote for me to buy my gear from and anything I ever need, they're more than happy to, to help me out. And so for this little fella here, they actually tipped me off that there was potentially a, a second hand D6 coming on the market soon or available. And if I'd like to do that, so not only have I got an awesome price on this body itself, it's got about 500, 600 shots, which is amazing to get a second hand camera like that. Um, 36 months interest free on my zipper payment uh, they throw in an extra battery awesome so well done guys thanks so much again I really do support uh, enjoy and appreciate your support um, just to help me go about my business but what I'm really looking forward to this um, camera more than anything and just the workflow that I have is that it's not about megapixels and that seems to be I reckon in the last five to ten years the kind of the buzzword around technology with DSLRs and photography in general is you know going from 12 megapixel to 16 and 20 and now like my D850s I think they're like 46 or something it might be 51 I don't even know all right but if you if your camera your DSLR has got I don't know in the teens or you know 20 megapixels of resolution then you've got more than enough for I imagine what you're doing whether you're trying to blow something up to put on your wall or put on the side of a bus or you know a billboard or whatever that's more than enough resolution so you know and even phones now are amazing right but what I've always been having discussions with other photographers and what I've been looking for is something that's going to give me more support in a situation like this where it is low light and if I've got to ramp my ISO up that I know that the image quality is not going to be destroyed by noise and get that sort of really staticky it's like a bad TV reception feel to them. I'm kind of a bit pedantic about that. I always try and shoot at the lowest ISO I possibly can, just so that the integrity of the image is maintained. So I know with this little guy, that's certainly going to be a feature. 
Uh, also, I'm looking forward to a bit faster frames per second. You know, I'm in the industry of trying to capture a moment, especially when it comes to sport or weddings or whatnot. And I guess to be able to pump an extra two or three frames per second in, in theory, should improve the chances of me being able to capture that moment. So I'm looking forward to that. I think my D850s with a battery grip run at about nine frames a second, I think. I don't even know. This little fella here is about 11 or 12. So um, yeah, just a little bit more with that. But also, the autofocus with this guy tends to land and hit the spot a lot more frequently than even my D850 does. So in a lower light situation, say if I was photographing swimming at Chandler or athletics under light or something like that, I just find that sometimes even with the powerhouse of a D850, sometimes the autofocus doesn't quite hit all the time. Whereas I know with the D6, that in particular is gonna be just amazing. So there's probably three really quick things that while, you know, I'm not, I'm not usually too excited about gear, that I'm really pumped actually finally after 10 years get my hand on one of these and, and welcome it to my family. The last thing I just want to talk about equipment is that, and I, I link it back to my previous life involved in cricket and probably more so as a player than more than anything, is that more money with gear gives obviously gives you the opportunity to use a product of a higher quality, but it does not guarantee a better outcome or a better output. So when I was younger, the dream was always to be like, oh, if I just had a bit more expensive cricket bat or if the willow was a bit better or if this gear was just a bit more expensive or a bit more um, better quality or the next rung up in quality, then that would automatically transfer to better performance. And as a busted, retired for a decade former cricketer, I can attest that just because you spend thousands and thousands of dollars on gear, it does not guarantee more runs or wickets or you know success or whatever. Funnily enough, it actually comes down to the person holding a cricket bat or holding a camera and their ability to execute or be creative or whatever that skill is to actually turn out that level of performance that's gonna be the difference. So if you were to walk into a house and you look around this beautiful newly built house from Metricon or whoever it is, I bet you you're not going to walk into the, you know, into the house and say to the owners, what a beautiful home this is. Gee, the builder you used must have had an awesome hammer. Or their saw was just amazing. Look how good this home is. You'd never say that, right? And it's kind of a bit the same. That's the way I look at it with photography. So yes, while gear allows you to have that opportunity to create, I suppose, um, you know, good work in trying conditions, it ultimately comes down to the person holding the camera and being able to use that tool effectively. So yeah, that's probably my last little spiel on my equipment. And I'm gonna throw straight into my run from a couple of weeks ago. And look, I think it's actually perfect the way it's worked out because as you'll see in this poor, sorry excuse of a run, this, was, this, this particular run you're about to watch, it wasn't even that long. It wasn't hot, it wasn't windy, it wasn't raining or there's no excuses but it was just a day that was hard. It was, I don't know, it was a hard run. It was like four or five Ks, I think, from memory. But um, it just gassed me, completely took it out of me. So I suppose, just like the last couple of days, um, where it's a bit tricky, and you may feel like you've, you know, you're up to your elbows in excrement, we'll call it that, that if we just go back to the reason why we're doing what we love, or we're doing a certain thing, often it's the reason when we start is a reason to keep going. And look, I may well have to eat my own advice here in the next few days because law of averages say that in this house, there's only one left, one bloke left is gonna catch this bug. And I don't think it's gonna be my dog. So yeah, thoughts and prayers, send them our way. Wish me luck, speedy recovery to Kim and to Tilly. But until next time, thanks for checking in. Have a look at this little bit, see you later. G'day, and welcome to the Breathless Blog. Oh. Um, this will be the first time that someone else has filmed this one apart from myself just sitting there straight after a run punching something out, but as I can hear my daughter rustling through a packet of chips, in the sense and the, the, the notion of good faith and being completely transparent, I suppose one of the things I've been conscious of is that since I've started this blog, that every time, you know, people might think that every time I just go out on a run, 
I have these beautiful, you know, butterfly and butterfly and sunshine filled epiphanies of excellence and um, fulfillment and creative ideas that just snap out of nothing. But let me tell you, today was not one of those. And for whatever reason, today was really, really hard. I reckon the last half of that run in particular. I definitely picked up a flower bag and everything about it was hard. Probably the hardest thing about it, I reckon, is obviously the flower bag is metaphorical, but literally the, the head noises and the self chat, you know, and telling yourself how easy it would be to stop or how easy it would be to slow down. Or Today, even my leg was itchy. I wanted to stop and scratch my leg, but that would have just been a cop out to to stop and take a shortcut but in saying that oh I reckon the thing that in that last half of my run that I turn to is is knowing or I suppose just connecting with why I'm doing my runs and a lot of that is obviously for some self-improvement and, and self-challenge but also as I turn down our street here and I see one of the biggest reasons that I, I have for the runs that I started a couple or probably over a year ago, but also to go on a run today when I knew it was going to be a little bit hard is for the people that that make it all worthwhile even when I do complete, you know, easy runs, but also runs like today. So I suppose at the risk of over embarrassing the person holding my camera right now, but also my little girl and the little dog over there, I suppose the takeaway is that even when it is really hard, there will only be, I don't know, I suppose just the, the reasons that you do it to start with are the reasons that you stick it out on, on days that even aren't that easy. So not so much photography today, but just, yeah, not every day is an easy one. Come here, but oh, even on days that aren't that great. There's still something to be grateful for, even though you're a little bit grumpy. This has been the Breathless Vlog. Thanks again. Till next time. See you later. Say bye. Bye bye. <laughs> grumpy. Thanks, guys. See ya.